In this video, I'll tell you the best places to live in Maine. I'll tell you about the people, the culture, housing prices, jobs, education, crime, and of course, all the awesome stuff there is to do in this great state. So what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Maine? Lobsters? L.L. Bean? The good news is, if you're thinking about moving to the Pine Tree State, there's a lot more to it than that. Maine truly is one of the most beautiful states in the U.S., and it has served as the muse for some of America's greatest painters. Andrew Wyeth, Carol Thayer Berry, Dala Vipkar, and don't forget the writers. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, E.B. White, Harriet Beecher Stowe, Henry David Thoreau, and yes, oh yes, the master of horror himself, Stephen King. If that seems like a lot of creativity in one spot, it's only because the state offers so much to be inspired by. Witness the undeniable beauty of its jagged coastline, dotted everywhere by historic lighthouses. Check out Acadia National Park, most of which is on an island. It's 49,000 acres in size, and there are several towns and villages right there on the island with it. If you love the outdoors, or if you just like to raise a family in a close-knit community, then Maine might be the place for you. Ranked 39th in size, Maine is a small state compared to those out west, but it's nearly as large as all those other New England states combined. For an East Coast state with so much beauty, it's sparsely populated, with about 43 people per square mile. Lifestyles here are slower paced, but this goes hand in hand with its rural character. Mainers, also called Down Easters, typify the New England spirit. They're more likely to have a strong work ethic. They're given a brutal honesty while at the same time coming off as reserved. If you're not from Maine and you move there, they're very likely to tell other Mainers that you're from, quote unquote, far away. They build solid long-term friendships, they're fiercely independent, and they love to complain about the weather. Though I've described Maine as sort of rural, it does have a few moderate to large cities, such as Portland, Lewiston, and Bangor. And yet wherever you go, it never manages to lose that small town feel. Bopping into friends or acquaintances while running errands happens daily. Locals you follow on social media can easily end up sitting at the table next to you at your favorite brew pub, cafe, or oyster bar. There is a lot of interest in Maine from outside the state. One of its largest industries is tourism, which generates 20% of the state's gross product. Winter is a snowy playground for cold-loving outdoor enthusiasts. Summer provides an escape from the heat, and fall offers stunning colors and whale watching. But what do the whales watch? Nobody knows. If you find out, be sure to tell me in the comments. Let's talk about some of the great outdoorsy things you can do if you decide to live here or come visiting. The first thing you should do is take a short stroll up the Atlantic coast and see the giant stairs. This formation of rocks is named for the geological history that shaped the coastline going back 500 million years ago. While you're there, you can look over the Atlantic Ocean at lobster boats hauling in their traps, or lift your gaze in wonder at seabirds soaring overhead in search of food, or laugh in delight at seals playing in the water. A short hop away from anywhere on the coast will bring you to one of Maine's 65 historic lighthouses. These majestic structures protect Mainers from the dangers of the rocky coastline. Many are open to the public. If you take a tour, the guides are informative, with fun facts and answers to everything you want to know about them. Here's New England's only remaining amusement park, and it's on a beach. Orchard Beach, to be exact, first opened to the public on July 2, 1898. After riding the Ferris wheel, the bumper cars, the roller coaster, and eating your fill of saltwater taffy, you can relax on the seven miles of golden sand until they come and haul you away. More adventurous visitors can go fishing, or go sailing along the coast in a classic schooner. You can even join the local lobstermen hauling in their traps. The Maine Lobster Festival runs from August 4 through 8. While there, you can eat all the lobsters you want for five days of cooking contests, live music, and local artists displaying their talents. Acadia National Park home of Cadillac Mountain, the tallest mountain on the North Atlantic seaboard. It sits on Mount Desert Island, the second largest island on the East Coast. Sprawling beneath its majesty are 160 miles of hiking trails stretching to the shore. Also within the park's confines is one of Maine's greatest natural landmarks, Thunder Hole. This inlet was carved by waves as tall as 40 feet high, battering the rocky landscape for thousands of years. When the waves slam into the inlet walls, the water collects inside a small cavern, this forces out the air, causing a thunderous boom. Acadia is one of the premier bird watching areas in the nation. From the bald eagle to the peregrine falcon, it's home to over 338 species of birds. But what do the birds watch? Maybe they watch the whales. Anyway, when you're done with all that bird watching, take a trip back to the coast for some fresh seafood, a local brew, or to go shopping with friends. I recommend Old Port Portland. Known for its 19th century buildings and cobblestone streets, 
The six neighborhoods of this historic city are lively day and night. There's plenty to do, whether that be at one of the several Michelin star restaurants, walking along the fishing piers, pub crawls, or shopping at the seemingly endless boutiques. Another cool thing about Maine is the wide and varied number of truly offbeat museums. How offbeat? They have museums dedicated to the telephone, to sardines, and even umbrella covers. They also have one of the world's only cryptozoology museums. What's that, you ask? This museum showcases hidden or unknown animals like yetis, Bigfoots, and the Loch Ness Monster. It's loads of fun whoever you are, and it's worth a visit if you possibly can. Okay, it's time to talk about the weather. No, not small talk, real talk, because it gets really cold in Maine. Unlike other places, the people of Maine don't go into hiding when the weather turns cold. They're big into their winter sports. Skiing, snowboarding, dog sledding, fat tire biking, ice fishing, snowmobiling, tobogganing, and snowshoeing, all of which I personally enjoy watching on TV. The average snowfall in Maine is 50 to 70 inches along the coast and 60 to 110 inches inland. Maine is also one of the coldest states, with the coldest day ever hitting a record negative 50 degrees in Big Black River. While spring marks the end of winter, don't be surprised if you see snow lingering just a little too long for comfort. You'll have to wait until May before the nightly low temperatures begin rising above freezing. But it's not all bad news. With spring comes a number of unique traditions. On the fourth Sunday of March, you can celebrate all things maple on Maine Maple Sunday. That's when syrup producers across the state throw open their doors to the public. Take a tour of the sap lines, or see demonstrations of sap boiling. And of course, be ready to eat an awful lot of pancakes. Also with spring comes the ice out. That's when Mainers place objects on still frozen lakes, then guess when the ice will thaw and cause the objects to sink. Why would they do such a curious thing? The answer is, once they sink, that means it's almost time to start bass fishing. You see that? Sometimes there are answers to the strange and bizarre mysteries of the world. While the winters are harsh and the springs chilly, summers in Maine are some of the most comfortable months you can spend here in the United States. The average daytime summer temperature is a refreshing 70 degrees. If you love gardening, you'll find it helpful to know that Maine is in the USDA's plant hardiness zones 3 through 6. You'll have an average of 155 days between your last frost date in May and your first frost date in September. In the fall, you'll witness a stunning display of orange, red, and yellow leaves along Maine's scenic byways. It's also the best time of the year for canoeing, kayaking, hunting, fly fishing, and for a lot of people, camping. Okay, so here you are, primed and ready to move to gorgeous, beautiful, lovely, amazing Maine right now. That's why we're moving quickly away from that to a topic that is sure to delight and amaze you even more. The economy. Hard to enjoy all that fun and adventure if you don't have at least a little money, wouldn't you say? According to the most recent census data, Maine saw real job growth of 3.22% from 2017 to 2018. By the end of 2019, the state's unemployment rate was 3%. However, the state's real GDP saw a growth of 2.6% on an annualized basis. This places Maine 35th nationally and 5th in New England, only ahead of Vermont in GDP growth. Sadly, Maine's economy is just 42nd in the nation due to its prohibitive tax policies. It has a 10.2% state and local tax burden, this on top of whatever the feds are taking. It's hard to sugarcoat it, so I'll just say it. The unfriendly business climate has led to more people leaving Maine than moving in, and the population is shrinking. Once known for its amazing shipbuilding, fishing, agriculture, and timber industries, Maine's economy has seen a shift over the last few decades towards services. In terms of jobs and wages, healthcare is the state's largest economic sector. That's not surprising, given the average age in Maine is 45, and that more than 21% of the population is 65 and older. Retail jobs make up the second largest industry, employing 14% of the private sector. The largest employers here are car dealerships, food and beverage companies, clothing manufacturers, and grocery stores. Another big industry is agriculture. There are over 8,000 farms in the state, and 60% of Maine's agricultural revenue comes from livestock. The rest comes from blueberries, potatoes, dairy, chicken eggs, and greenhouse garden products. Salaries range from $26,000 a year to around $52,000 a year, depending on if you're a laborer or farm manager. Manufacturing accounts for a mere 1,600 jobs in Maine, paying around $65,000 a year. The mining industry produces sand and gravel, masonry, crushed stone and gemstones, and even peat. On average, miners can earn around $68,000 annually. And of course, there's fishing. Thanks to the heavy state and federal regulations, Maine's commercial fishing industry isn't as strong as it once was. Its famous lobsters come in at 40 million pounds annually and account for 90% of the nation's supply. And the yearly salary for Maine lobstermen is $33,000. 
So where are the best places to live in Maine? Of course, this is all very subjective. Home is, after all, where the heart is. It's also where you lay your hat. And if you can think of any other good cliches, put them in the comments. Anyway, first up in my short and utterly subjective list is Bar Harbor. Have you ever thought about living on an island? Located on Mount Desert Island, around 5,500 people call this seagoing town their home. Perched like a jewel on the gorgeous waters of Frenchman's Bay, Bar Harbor is the gateway to Cadia National Park. The park's entrance is literally within walking distance, and the greater portion of it is located on the island. Come summer and fall, the island turns into an explosion of tourists, there to see the truly awesome scenic views and to visit the bars, restaurants, shops, and cafes. There's even a movie theater if you absolutely must. The island is connected to the mainland by a highway, offering additional amenities not 30 minutes away in Ellsworth. For those of you looking to live in Bar Harbor, there's a Hannaford supermarket for your salt and pepper needs. And what I mean by that is if I lived here, I'd be fishing every day I could, and I'd only get around to eating microwave pizza when I got sick. Ah, but if I did get sick, I'd segue over to Mount Desert Island Hospital for their five-star patient treatment as reported by U.S. News. In Bar Harbor, the median household income is $51,544. While the island does have a few biomedical research labs, most of the employment is in the hotel, food service, and retail sectors. Because tourism is such a big part of the local economy, much of the job market is seasonal. Come November 1st, the hotels shut down for the winter, and many restaurants and shops either close up or have abbreviated hours. Home prices are just under $333,000 a year, and the median rent is around $860. Considering where they're at, that's honestly not too bad. And if you hate crime as much as I do, you'll be happy to know that the crime rate is an incredible 58% lower than the national average. There's one public school here, serving 360 students, and it's in the top 10% of all schools in Maine. I'll turn south now to the small historic town of Hallowell. Just off the banks of the Kennebec River, Hallowell is as big on charm as it is low on population. Its historic district is listed on the National Register of Historic Places due to its 18th and 19th century architecture. Half the town's 400 buildings were built before 1865. Water Street, which other towns call Main Street, features a surprisingly wide assortment of restaurants and antique stores. There's also a fish market, an old-fashioned candy store, and an equally old-fashioned barber shop. The median household income here is $54,400. Given its proximity to Augusta, Maine's capital, the state government is one of the biggest employers. That said, healthcare and education are also big employers in Hallowell. In 2020, the town's unemployment rate was around 4.7%, which is pretty good under the circumstances. Homes in Hallowell are more affordable than other parts of Maine. Prices go for $200,000 on average, and a one-bedroom apartment can be had for as little as $800 a month. The school district underperforms for the state, and rates a score of B by niche.com. Ah, but the crime rate here is even lower than Bar Harbor, if you can believe it. And it's dropped 48% from previous years. Last up in our top places to live is Portland. This is Maine's largest city. It's nestled in Casco Bay, itself nestled in the Gulf of Maine. Some of the best features in Portland are the beautiful landscapes, the vibrant food, and the art scene. For these and other reasons, the city frequently pops up on the various best places lists on where to live, visit, or retire. There's an abundance of world-class restaurants, craft breweries, and distilleries. You can purchase the day's best fish or lobsters at the Harbor Bay Fish Market on your way home from work. Enjoy amazing sunsets at Portland Headlight, Maine's oldest lighthouse. You may find this interesting, it was actually commissioned by George Washington, America's oldest lumberjack. The official population of Portland is around 66,000. The South Portland's metro area is closer to 535,000. That's roughly 40% of the entire state's population. These surrounding areas, Cape Elizabeth, Falmouth, Gorham, South Portland, Saco, Scarborough, and Westbrook are routinely cited as some of the best places to live in Maine. There are also thousands of jobs in the athletic and outdoor apparel industry. We're talking Nike, Adidas, and Columbia Sportswear. In 2019, unemployment was a bottom scraping 2.3%. At the time, this was nearly a full point lower than the national average. And as with everything too good to be true, this economic prosperity comes with a high price tag and you'll see it in the housing costs. Housing in the Portland area is 8% higher than the national average, but the schools are great, and crime is relatively low at 60% the national average. Thank you for watching this admittedly short breakdown of the great state of Maine. In putting this video together, I honestly kept thinking how much I'd love to live here, if nothing else for the chance to live close to the coast and all that fishing. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe and share with your friends, and until next time, I'll see ya.